Hello and welcome everyone. In this video, I'm going to give you a demo of a React WooCommerce theme. As you can see, the front end that we have is in React and the back end is in WordPress. Okay, so all of these products that you see uh, are being fetched via GraphQL uh, onto the front end. So these, all of the products, these are the same products, uh, wallpaper, LOE, all of these are the same, right? So all of these, all of these are being fetched via GraphQL onto the front end. Now you'll ask me, what is the need for building a theme in React while we can use a traditional WordPress theme, right? What's the benefit of decoupling the architecture? So one of the key things that you can see, if you go to any of the product pages, you see there is no page reload, right? It's super fast. It's, it's really performant. So it just feels like a native app where you just click on any of the links and it opens up straight away. So that's going to be really good for your users and it's going to help get more revenue because uh, the experience that they get is really, really awesome. So you can see you can do add to cart over here and it's immediately added to the cart. As you can see, you can click on this. Now, if you want to increase this number, you can increase it. The cart got updated. Uh, unlike in WordPress where you had to click on the update card if you want to make any changes. But here it's just one click and it's done. You can remove the items from the card. It's just one click and it's done. So or the entire application that you see on the front end for users is actually in JavaScript using React uh, and that uses Next.js framework. Now you can go to proceed to checkout. You can fill up this form and you can also select any of the payment methods and you can go ahead and create an order, right? So let me quickly give you that demo. You click on place on order. And there you go, you can see the order has been processed, right? So as you can see that the order that we had created has come in over here. So if you go to WooCommerce and if you go to orders, the order that I had created earlier will show up here. So as you can see that this is eight minutes ago. This is what we created, correct? So if you click on it, you can see that it's got all of the uh, details. And you can see it's really user experience is really seamless. Uh, you've got this carousal uh, of the gallery, etc. right? Uh, you also have the carousal for the products, as you can see all of that. And now you will say to me that why did I even need to use Next.js? Couldn't I have just build in React? Well, there are some benefits. And I'm going to start with the performance first because eventually it all boils down to the performance. So let's take an example. Let's say we have a browser and I'm going to give you two scenarios. The first scenario, we have a static page on the server wherein the data is already available and all it has to do is just you know serve that on the front end and in the second scenario it doesn't have the data so it needs to make a request to get the data from the database and then finally go ahead and resolve the data and send that back to the browser okay now can you tell me out of these two scenarios which one will be faster of course everyone will say that okay well yes the first option will be the fastest because the data is already available all it all it's doing is just just serving the static pages from the server to the browser and that's what's happening in next.js so in next.js we are taking the advantage of the static page generation okay now you'll ask me imran fine you're going to use the static pages but what if i go ahead and update the price of the product Okay, if I'm going to use static pages, that means my price of the product or if I add new products, those will never get updated and, and that's not going to really help me. So I'll say to you, wait a minute. Next.js has come up with a really good feature and that feature is called incremental static regeneration. Now what that means, I'll explain to you in a minute. In Next.js, uh, what's going to happen is that you will have an old static version of the page which would have already uh, got the data at the build time so what it does is basically when you run the build of the application your react application it is going to do all of the queries create all of the static pages and then um, finally just serve them whenever the user sends the request so let's say you go ahead and make a update on the price okay so what's going to happen is 
if the first request comes in, then the user is going to get the old version of the page, which is the static version of the page. But the first request is also going to trigger a regeneration of the page, which means that Next.js in the background will actually create the new version of the page by sending a fresh request and getting the fresh data. So that new version of the page will be available then. Of course, the first user won't get that new version of the page, so he will still be served an old static page. But any further request that comes in, uh, because it creates the page in the background, if the user 2, user 3 or 4 comes in, they are going to get the fresh, updated new version of the page. Okay. Now you'll say to me that Imran, is, isn't my first user getting affected? How do I solve that? Well, I'll say to you that it wouldn't really matter because think about it, if you're going to update the price of the page, wouldn't you just go on to the front end and at least check once if everything is working correctly? So that is your first request. And then and then subsequent users will already have the new version of the page. Okay. So so that's what Next.js does. Basically, it creates a page in the background, which is the updated page. It statically regenerates the page for you, and then any subsequent request can have that page. And you can also control this time of revalidating or, or creation of this uh, page by there is a feature available in Next.js where you can pass the value for revalidate. Uh, you can set it to 30 seconds, 60 minutes, up to you, depending on depending on how frequently you would like the page to be updated. So let's take an example. Let's say this is my product, which is wallpaper. And this is my live site currently. So which means the build has already run and Next.js has already done all of the queries, generated the static pages and the data for that is ready for the user to see. Okay, so that's why this is all static page and static content. Let's say we go to the back end and I'm going to go to all products and let's say I go to this wallpaper and I'm going to update the price to 16. 16. Okay. Now what's going to happen in the front end is that because uh, we are ensuring that all users see static pages, if I go and hit this page again on the first request, you see the price did not update it. Why? Because it is ensuring that all users get the static page. So it's going to serve it from the old static page. But in the background, next is, is actually generated uh, the new version of the page by making a fresh request to the server. So now if any subsequent request comes in, you're going to see the new price. So notice that it's 17 right now. And if I hit refresh, there you go. Congratulations. It's just changed. And remember in mind that till the time the uh, page is not regenerated, if and then until then users will see the old page. So it's not that it's going to be broken or anything. Okay, so that's that. Uh, but what about if that page doesn't exist? So for example, as you can see that this is home page. Of course, home page exists as a static page in, in Next.js on the server. And then these single product, as you can see, these are dynamically generated based on whatever the slug of that product is. Correct. Uh, but if I go ahead and add a new product, what would happen then? Do I have to rebuild again? Because you can see this is the life site, right? I don't want to rebuild again if I add a new product. So let's see what happens in that case. So I'm going to go to add new and I'm going to say new product. And I'm going to put the price as let's say 16 and 10. And then I'm just going to quickly add a product image. Okay, so let's say I add this product image, I hit update. Now, what is the URL on which we expect that product to be? Of course, it should be, I'm going to open it in a new window just to show you, the product slash whatever the slug of that, right? So what is the slug? Let's take a look. So slug of my product is new product. So I'm going to put that there. So new product. See what happens. Now if I hit it, because that page does not exist on the server, Next.js is going to do the magic wherein we don't have to rebuild the application. It's going to generate that page for you and then show that to the user. Take a look. There you go. Congratulations. I mean, isn't that amazing? I, mean, I absolutely love this feature. You know, 
we are taking the advantage of the static pages and we are not having to rebuild the application just to be able to see the new update it is simply amazing perfect now by building an application in javascript you kind of come out of that templating system that you have in wordpress and really go free with the kind of design you want to build as you can see that this is a really cool design that that uh, i have built over here and you have more control because now to achieve any type of designs all you need is just the data right so you get the data from wordpress using graphql and you can use that data to then go really free and create the design of your dream right you can also have just one backend where you can manage all of your store and then you can have multiple front-end applications and you can also have a mobile app as well right now another benefit is that what we're using over here is actually tailwind okay so we are not using bootstrap uh, or anything we are actually using tailwind so what's the advantage of using tailwind well tailwind basically is a utility first css framework one of the main advantages that i like about tailwind is that if you're going to be using let's say only 10 to 20 classes it's not going to include the css for other classes apart from those unlike bootstrap or other libraries where it just includes all of the css even though you're not using it so you can control there are a lot of customization options that you get uh, you can create your own utilities basically you will have more control over your css and, and that's to be honest is really powerful because all you are going to output is just the css which you're actually using and not going to include any of the unnecessary classes okay all right you have options of categories so you have different categories you can check out uh, you can select these categories and it's going to show you all of the products under this category as well so you've got the category page uh, there you can choose you've got a single product page and all of these benefits and this is a free theme by the way so you can go on to Imran it's Sayyid Wu next and you can just go ahead and fork it and use it for your own project so it's it's a free WooCommerce theme uh, all you have to do is just install a bunch of plugins like these and just add your WordPress site URL and then it's, uh, it's going to automatically source from that particular website if you did like my work please do start my repository like all of the beautiful 245 people have and do subscribe to my channel if you aren't already and do follow me on twitter my twitter handle is imran h sayed and do follow me on github as well my github handle is imran h sayed as well okay so brilliant i hope you did like the video if you have any questions you can leave it in the comment box and i'm going to see you in the next video